Hello everyone, Nature's Temper here, just reminding you that we have t-shirts. If you want to support and show your love for the channel, look in the description below. There you will also find a t-shirt design called Bring Back the Wolf. All proceeds of this design go directly to the Rewilding Institute, a charity that I fully support. Now enjoy the story, you monsters. The Minotaur of Stag Creek by Ganymese The banshee shriek and strobing lights of the cruiser died down as Officer Hank Lewis switched off the ignition. The journey was far from pleasant. The damn vehicle had almost surrendered to the stubborn, gluttonous mud that led up the road. With a grunt filled with both frustration and relief, Lou swung the door open and hauled himself out of the car, slamming the door with a hollow thud. Officer J. Bradshaw climbed from the other side. He was a wiry fellow, a Brit, with a look of apprehension on his face. Lou didn't blame him. In truth, he didn't exactly want to be there either. Lou wiped a sheen of sweat from his brow. He reached for his radio, which ran on one of those new armor systems, and flicked on the receiver. Dispatch, this is MB-32A-1097. We're at the scene. Copy that, MB-32. Anything of note? As he gazed up at the old wooden fence, covered in graffiti and lichen, Luz shook his head. Nothing. The radio went silent as he stepped forward. A sign affixed to the fence, faded with age, read, Welcome to Stag Creek Woods. Beyond the fence, the wood started, a mass of green and brown and black, a wilderness of trees and shrubbery. He took a deep breath. To his right, Bradshaw stood silently, waiting. Luz looked at him, and with a nod turned on his flashlight. He pushed open the old gate, rotten, damp and unpleasant to the touch, and held it open. Once the two of them were through, Luz let it swing shut behind him. Luz felt uncomfortable somehow. A feeling of unease crept through him. Part nyctophobia, part claustrophobia. He was used to the well-lit streets, not a pitch-black woodland. By all accounts, neither of them should have been there in the first place. Unfortunately for Luz, the rural division had been short-staffed, and naturally, he and Bradshaw had been lumbered with the job. Now they were paying the price... At least there were other officers in the area. While Luz and Bradshaw were operating primarily in the west, three other groups were stationed in different corners of the woods. Canine units were operating elsewhere, but neither of them had the luxury of a dog. The outer parts of the woodland, like the fence that surrounded it, were littered with missing posters. Luz shone his light over them, despite already knowing the details. He didn't know why, Maybe it was some way of trying to distract himself from his surroundings. The photograph was rather low in quality. Then again, the whole thing was. It depicted a relatively young woman, brunette and heavyset, identified as Gina Montgomery by the bold typeface at the bottom. There was a Winchester rifle slung over her shoulder. A hunter, Lewis observed. Come on. Bradshaw said. We haven't got time to stare at the bloody posters, let's go. They continued on their path, Bradshaw up ahead. As the two of them took their first steps into the woodland, the missing posters grew sparser, until one remained and the trees were bare. Stag Creek Forest was an eerie place at night. Occasionally, a shadowy shape would appear against the beam of the flashlight. Every single time... Luz realized that it was nothing but a raccoon, or a skunk, or something of that nature. He had a near miss with a skunk after about a half an hour, and narrowly avoided a snake right after that. There was wildlife everywhere, and that posed quite a problem. If the two of them found a body, and Luz strongly hoped they wouldn't find a body, chances were that scavengers would get to it before they did. No use worrying about it, though. Not yet. 
Luz decided to just keep going and hope for the best. Luz shone his beam straight down and spotted something on the ground. There were indentations in the leaf litter, regular and far too big to have been made by raccoons. Hey, he said. Take a look at this. Bradshaw turned around and looked at the tracks. He bent down and examined them properly. Footprints, he said, stating the obvious. How fresh do you think they are? I'd say, he thought about it, a couple of days. Time frame adds up. Let's keep moving. He followed Bradshaw as he moved further into the woods. There was a strong sense of deja vu about it. They hadn't been here before, obviously, or at least Luz himself hadn't. But there was a dim familiarity to it. Of course there was. Luz had grown up around forests, but that didn't mean being in unfamiliar woodland during the night was any easier. He still felt very vulnerable. This place gives me the creeps already, muttered Luz. Silence. There was no response from Bradshaw. All Luz heard now were the chirps of crickets. Jay? Nothing. Jay Bradshaw had spotted something on a tree. As he passed by, he thought little of it. Only when he'd passed it did he stop to think. His curiosity had gotten the better of him, and he'd gone back to check it out. Looking at the tree, a big Sitka spruce, Bradshaw scrutinized its bark. There were deep gashes in the wood, deep enough to tear through the cambium layer. Chunky sap oozed from it like blood from a wound. At the tree's base lay branches that looked to have been snapped off by some powerful force. The first thought Bradshaw had was that it was a bear. He could only make out three claw marks, and each seemed to be oriented in the wrong direction. That was no bear. He turned and opened his mouth to say something to Luz, but there was no sign of him. Furring his brow, Bradshaw yelled. Luz! There was no answer. He tried again, but again got no reply, and heard only crickets. Fumbling around in his belt, Bradshaw withdrew his radio. He tried Luz's channel, but received only static. Switching channels, he spoke. Dispatch, this is MB-32B. I got separated from MB-32A. I'm near a big Sitka spruce. Rough location is Stag Creek Forest. Over. There was silence from the other end. Over the din of the radio, Luz could make out the sound of rustling leaves and snapping branches. A moment later, the voice of the dispatcher broke the silence. MB-32B, have you attempted to contact MB-32A? Twice so far. No response. Over. Copy that. Keep us updated and keep trying to re-establish contact. Understood. Bradshaw slotted the radio back into its holster. Damn it, Hank, where are you? He turned away from the mangled tree trunk and continued. About five minutes after leaving the Sitka spruce, something appeared in Bradshaw's periphery. He spun around. Lose? There was no reply. Whatever it was carried on, unperturbed. Some sort of animal, maybe. He raised his flashlight and shone it on the vegetation nearby. It moved. Bradshaw furrowed his brow and walked a little closer, but not too far. A sharp screech came from the bush barely three feet from his ear. He swung the flashlight and chuckled. It was a raccoon. Son of a bitch. He watched the bewildered animal as it disappeared into the night. Luz had decided to press on, following the tracks. Bradshaw would catch up eventually, he was sure of it. After a while, he decided to sit down on an old mossy log, and there he waited. But there was no sign. Eventually, he got up. If he couldn't find Bradshaw... And if Bradshaw wasn't going to come to him, he tried to track down one of the other officers. A burst of static interrupted his thoughts, and he could barely make out what was being said. Radio check. MB-32A, do you copy? He fumbled in his belt and pulled out his radio. 
Reading you loud and clear, dispatch. Over. Any contact with the MB-32B? He's looking for you. You haven't heard a bloody thing. Over. A pause. Do you know your location? Is there anyone else in the vicinity? I, uh... Lewis got to his feet and shone his flashlight around. I haven't the faintest clue. As far as I know, I'm the only officer in the sector. Over. Copy that. The radio clicked. Luz glanced behind him, shining his flashlight into the darkness, and again saw nothing. He set off, continuing to follow the footprints. He wanted to back out, but alone or otherwise, he still had a job to do. For a while, a Hank Luz walked on, until the sound of rushing water reached his ears. Shining his flashlight up ahead, he saw the ground abruptly drop off. Must be Stag Creek. Luz thought to himself as he walked closer. His approach confirmed his suspicions. Stack Creek was relatively wide, a tributary of the Eel River. The banks were surrounded by rocks, and the water level was low. Most of the riverbed was filled with sludge and silt. Beneath the surface were countless boulders and submerged logs, and it stank to high heaven. Rotten eggs... That was the closest approximation Lewis could find. The smell was that of rotten eggs. He narrowed his eyes. What the hell? What could be causing that in the middle of the woods? Sewage? But as Lewis stood there, the scent seemed to fade. The rattle of gunfire rang out from somewhere in the woods. Lewis' head turned. He saw a bright flashlight through the distant trees... As he took a step towards the source of the noise, they were replaced by something else. The wind now carried with it the sound of screaming. And the yelping of dogs. His gun held in a white-knuckled grip, Luz walked slowly backwards towards the creek. He was only dimly aware of his footing as he slipped in the mud. All thoughts dissipated and he felt the tug of gravity winning over. He felt a sharp pain in his left calf as he fell. He landed face down at the bottom of the embankment. Screwing his eyes shut, he pushed himself clear of the sludge. He coughed hard and fumbled for his pistol, reassured by the sensation of the grip on his handle. Luz climbed to his feet slowly, shakily. Opening his eyes, at last, he looked down at himself. There was a big tear in his calf, a gash, blood. Luz gritted his teeth. Fucking hell, he said to nobody in particular. It wasn't too bad, a flash wound at best. But the risk of infection was there. Suddenly he felt vulnerable. The scent of blood would carry. Reaching into his duty belt, he withdrew a tourniquet and started to apply it. It was a slapdash job, but it would do the trick. Once that was done, he reached for his radio. A sinking feeling crept over Luz when he felt it. It was very clearly broken. Ah, crap. Feeling his leg wound gingerly, Luz grimaced. A thought crossed his mind. The squad car. There were probably still some band-aids in there. If he could just get back to it, he'd be in the clear. Luz began walking, but paused after only a moment. His gaze landed on something on the other side of the creek. Furrowing his brow, he walked closer. The footprints started up again on the opposite bank, but this time they were irregular. The track maker had fallen, and Luz noted they hadn't been lucky. Probably twisted an ankle or something, but as he started following the tracks, Luz's eyes landed on something else. More tracks, a totally different shape. Hoofprints. They looked like those of a moose, but they couldn't have been. There were no moose in California, let alone Humboldt County. Without breaking stride, Luz began to follow the tracks. The thought of calling for help passed through Bradshaw's head, but he decided against it. It wasn't out of pride or anything, more so the opposite, a refusal to admit to anyone that he was lost. 
Sighing, Bradshaw continued to walk. And that was when the sounds hit him. His first thought was it sounded like gunfire. His second was that it was gunfire. Turning his head in the direction, Bradshaw looked through the trees, and he saw flashlights in the distance. Something moved through the vegetation directly behind him. Bradshaw spun around to face its source. At first he was hopeful. Was it loose? Hello? he said loudly. Hank? No reply. He shone his flashlight in that direction, but he saw nothing. No movement, no lose. The sound was coming from beyond the reach of Bradshaw's flashlight. Then the smell struck him. A horrid odour like rotten eggs. A bead of sweat trickled down Bradshaw's forehead, and he tightened his grip on the object in his hand. God, he thought to himself, get a grip. There were probably hundreds of rational explanations for that smell. It wasn't like he could think of any, but there must have been. Taking a deep breath, Bradshaw walked towards the source of the smell. It was awful, and now he could discern the undertone of it. What the fuck? As the sulfur smell faded, the rotting smell seemed to grow stronger as a low drone filled the air. He covered his face with his sleeve and shone his flashlight on the ground. The scene before him closely resembled a kill site. Scraps of tattered fabric were strewn across like confetti. The buzz of flies drowned out every single sound. Bradshaw's eyes landed on the mass, sprawled in the middle. Christ alive. His mind went blank for a second, feeling bile rise in his throat, and after forcing it back down, he fumbled for his radio. Dispatch, this is MB-32B. I have a 10-100. I repeat, I have a 10-100. The exact location is unclear, though surrounded by oak trees. Bradshaw's radio crackled. Copy that, MB-32B, came the voice of the dispatcher. As it faded into silence yet again, leaving only the buzzing of flies, Bradshaw felt sick. God, he regretted being here, but he didn't have time to calm down. A sound came from behind him. Whirling around, he reached for the holster on his waist and pulled out the pistol. Another noise punctuated the monotone droning. Footfalls, right behind him. He didn't have enough time to fire. The trees around Luz grew sparser as he trudged further from the woodland's dark depths. The air seemed to grow heavy, and it was almost unnervingly silent. A few times Luz thought he'd heard something moving through the vegetation nearby. Hell, he probably had. But then, everything sounded louder in the woods. Worse still, it had started to rain, and now he was utterly drenched. But despite the downpour, that sulfur stench had returned in force, and it was as if Luz had headed straight towards its point of origin. It hadn't been there when Bradshaw passed through earlier that night. He was sure of it. His thoughts were interrupted by a hideous scream, followed by two loud gunshots. Instinctively, Luz whipped out his handgun and spun around in the direction of its source, his heart pounding hard in his chest. The scream was unmistakably human. Bradshaw? He half yelled. He was met with silence. The screaming stopped abruptly. Reholstering his pistol, Luz raised his flashlight in that direction. Nothing. He staggered in the direction of the scream. Something must have happened. Had Bradshaw fallen? Luz pushed through the dense underbrush, his footsteps muffled by the leaf litter. Cursing his lack of functioning radio, he pressed forward. A faint rustling sound reached his ears, and he knew that it couldn't have been Bradshaw. It was too close. He directed his flashlight in the direction of the noise. A flash of movement. So quick that for a moment he questioned whether he had seen it. Was that an animal? A person? Who's there? He barked, with renewed, if deceptive, bravado. There was no answer. Don't try anything stupid, I'm armed! Again, no answer. The stench of rotten eggs reached his nostrils again. 
It was almost unbearable now, as if some hellish smoke was billowing into his lungs. Lewis coughed hard and staggered back. From just beyond the reach of his light, he could faintly discern a noise. It was the sound of loud inhalations and exhalations. Luz pulled out his sidearm and aimed it shakily into the inky blackness. Unsteadily, he stepped closer, staring into the void. He was dimly aware that the void was staring back. Come on, you little shit, he mouthed. Come out here where I can see you. But he heard nothing, saw no more. The smell faded away. It was gone. Luz lowered his gun and squinted into the night. From his left came a noise. He held his breath and listened. It was breathing. Bradshaw's breathing. Stuffing the gun back in its holster, Luz staggered in the direction of the noise. Bradshaw! He yelled again. This time there was a response. A weak scoff. Bad time. Luz quickened his pace, his heart pounding in his chest. With each step, the ground beneath his feet grew increasingly uneven, making his progress even more difficult. He stumbled over the protruding roots and fallen branches, his injured calf searing with pain. His flashlight finally landed on Jay Bradshaw's form on the ground. The first thing Luz saw was blood. God, there was so much blood. Bradshaw managed to apply a tourniquet to his leg. Jesus... Luz muttered. Stay still, Jay. What happened here? Bradshaw shook his head. Your guess is as good as mine. He seemed lucid, which was a good sign. One moment everything was fine, and then... I don't even know. Was it a bear? A scoff. Bradshaw gestured to Luz's left. Would a bear do that? Luz turned around. There was the body of a woman, slumped against the base of a tree, her glazed hazel eyes staring vacantly into the sky. Skin torn, showing early signs of decay. The abdominal cavity was torn wide open, almost hollowed out. Tattered pieces of clothing seemed oddly jagged, like they'd been bitten into. Nearby, a Winchester rifle lay, snapped clean in two. Her throat had been crushed. Oh shit, that's Montgomery. Jesus. Lewis breathed. I had a good look at it, Bradshaw said. Saw it feeding. And let me tell you, that thing wasn't like any bear I've ever seen. Do you still have your radio? Bradshaw gestured to his right. Lou snatched up the radio and flicked on the receiver. Dispatch, this is MB-32A, Lou said. We have a 10999 and 1054. I repeat, we have a 10999 and a 1054. Requesting immediate backup. Over. A blast of static came from the speakers. Copy that, MB-32A, said the dispatching officer. Establishing connection with the radio as we speak. How are you holding up? Pretty banged up. MB-32B is priority for the moment. Over. Copy that. Can he walk? Not sure yet. If you can, try and get back to the squad car and wait. If you can't... Try and stay where you are. We'll pick you up. Bradshaw shrugged. Haven't tried yet. I was more focused on keeping that bastard away. Luz assessed Bradshaw's injuries properly. God, it was worse than he thought. There were cuts. Deep cuts. Most were on Bradshaw's arms. Though some, thankfully least severe of the lot, were on his torso. Through tattered clothing, Luz saw the culprit had managed to slash through a knife-proof vest. Christ. Finally, he stood upright and spoke. I think our best bet would be to get going. If that thing comes back, it will. Lewis nodded. It took some effort to get Bradshaw back to his feet. The leg with the tourniquet was bad, and the matter was complicated by Lewis's wound. But it worked out in the end. And thank fuck for that. With Bradshaw's arm slung around Lou's shoulder for support, the two of them awkwardly made their way through the dense, dark woods. Each step was a struggle in and of itself. With his flashlight clutched tightly in his free hand, Lou scanned the tree line. He was fairly certain they were heading in the right direction. 
At least he hoped they were. The stench had faded away. Now there were only the smells of the woods and the blood. From the trees behind them, there came a roar. No, roar was the wrong word. A scream. It was one of those sounds, like a mountain lion in heat or a dying rabbit, that sounded almost human. The sound had a nasal quality, like a bull. What the hell was that? Lewis muttered. Bradshaw reached to his sidearm. Hopefully it wasn't what I think it is. As the other officer raised his gun, Luz kept his sight forward. He didn't want to look back, to see the thing that was doubtlessly pursuing them now. A sound came from behind. Footsteps. Loud footsteps, and the smell came back. He stumbled, and his ears rang as Bradshaw fired his first shot. But the sound kept advancing. Luz spun around, aiming at the threat, even though he couldn't see it. Something slammed hard into the two of them. Luz crashed to the ground. A scream filled his ears. He staggered to his feet and spun around. He was dimly aware of something huge grabbing Jay Bradshaw by the throat and hauling him into the air. And Luz fucking ran. He didn't dare to look back. Didn't dare to slow down. He couldn't even afford to trip, or else that would be it. His mind was a whirl of fear, regret, and confusion. The flashlight beam bobbed erratically in front of him, barely illuminating the trees up ahead. But Luz saw far enough. Up ahead was a partly collapsed tree. It was his best bet. Reaching the fallen tree, Luz squeezed himself into the narrow crevice between the trunk and the jumble of branches. He huddled there, breathless and trembling, praying that it wouldn't find him. It passed by. Minutes ticked by, agonizingly slow, as Luz strained his ears, listening for any sign of the thing. The woods seemed eerily silent, devoid of any sound except for the rustling leaves and his heartbeat. It didn't come back. Taking in a deep breath, Luz slowly emerged from his cover. Hank Luz buried his head in his hands and slumped against the log. Oh, God... He'd been stupid. He should have kept shooting. Should have risked it and gone after it when it took Bradshaw. But he didn't. And now that thing had claimed its second victim. Luz knew he might be next. He had to get out. He'd get to his squad car and inform dispatch. Taking in a deep breath, he stood upright and started to walk the way he'd come. After what felt like hours of walking, it occurred to Luz that he was lost, and badly at that. Everything looked the same in that bloody woodland, and he was fairly certain that he'd already completely overshot the point he was supposed to turn. But at least the homogeny was starting to fade away. Now Luz could make out gaps in the trees again. Moonlight dimly filtered through the canopy once more. He'd reached a break in the woods. Taking in a deep breath, letting out an unjustified sigh of relief, he pushed on, advancing towards the opening as fast as his aching lungs would allow. He staggered to the edge. Below lay Stag Creek. Its waters swollen by the rain, it had become a frenzied torrent. The sight wiped exhaustion from Lou's mind, replacing it with a sinking feeling of despair. There was no way he could cross it on foot, especially in his weakened state. Luz scanned the area, searching for an alternative route. His eyes landed on a fallen pine tree wedged in the side of the embankment. It was the only way he could get across, precarious as it was. If nothing else, he'd been on the different side of the river to that thing. Cautiously, he made his way around to the rocks that fringed the creek and approached the fallen pine tree. It was long and sturdy, with its branches stripped away by time and weather. Liz could see that it leaned slightly towards the other side of the creek, offering a precarious bridge over the raging waters. Taking deep breath, Luz steadied himself and carefully stepped onto the fallen tree. It wobbled under his weight, making his heart race even faster. 
he knew that any misstep could send him tumbling into the merciless current below. He kept his focus on the opposite bank, his eyes fixed on a solid patch of ground where he aimed to reach. As he inched forward, the tree groaned and shifted. Each step became a test of balance and nerve. Both dissipated as a scream echoed from the trees. Luz slept. No, 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 no! He hit the water hard. His left hand was pinned under his body, and he felt a bone snap as he struck the underlying rock. White-hot pain surged through his shoulder. The moment his head cleared the water, he took in a deep breath, and it took every fiber of his being not to scream. His flashlight drifted away from him. With his good arm, Luz strained and barely grabbed it. It still worked, thank fuck. Awkwardly, he struggled to the surface, hooking his arm around a rock and holding himself in place. From somewhere behind him, there came a loud crash. Gritting his teeth from the pain, he spun around. And there it was, rising from the water. It was tall, far taller than a man. The flashlight illuminated a long face atop a thickly muscled neck. Lou's first thought was that it resembled a cow's head, but it was all wrong. Its mouth stretched too far back. The eyes that stared back at Lou's weren't those of a bull, though they faced forward like those of a man. It was, he realized, like a minotaur. And then, lifting a large hoof foot from the torrent, it started to advance. Lou staggered back, his eyes locked on the creature, watering as that horrid rotten egg stench hit him like a sack of bricks. It was in no rush to attack. It knew he was injured, and it had no reason to charge. Swapping the flashlight for the pistol, Luz raised it and aimed it at the thing. It was the hand he was worst with, but that didn't matter. His finger coiled around the trigger, but the thing kept coming. The moment Hank Luz pulled the trigger, the night briefly turned to day, a bullet struck the Minotaur's thick neck, causing a spray of dark liquid to spurt from the wound. It staggered, clutching the wound with a cleft hand. A low rasp escaped its jaws as it backed off. Luz leveled his pistol at it again and fired. It stumbled back, but then, with a sudden burst of energy, it lunged forward, its heavily muscled body barreling through the water towards him. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! Lou's heart pounded in his chest as he fired off another round. The Minotaur roared in agony, but its momentum was unstoppable. It was too close, and Lou's was too slow. A three-clawed hand swiped at him, catching him across the chest. He collapsed into the water again, racked by pain. The gun was no longer in his grip. On his feet now, Lou saw the thing surging towards him again, and on instinct, he pulled out his flashlight shining the beam right into its eyes. It staggered to a halt, its two long jaws parting in a hideous growl of pain. While it was distracted, Luz fumbled around in the creek for his gun. His fingers brushed against the cold metal of his pistol, and with a surge of relief he grasped onto it. Again he leveled the gun and fired. The Minotaur stopped. Its body shuddered. Blood spurted from the middle of its head. Slowly, it pitched forward, crashing into the creek and disappearing beneath the tumultuous surface. Luz watched it for a while, seeing if it would rise, but it never did. Hank Luz lowered his gun, eyes wide, watching it as it sank beneath the surface of the creek. He slumped down on a rock and placed his hand on his chest. It stung, and badly. Luz pulled away his hand and saw blood. Wiping it off with his pant leg, he reached to his belt, pulled out his radio. Oh, thank fuck it still worked. And turned it on, all with his right arm. Dispatch. MB-32A, what the hell happened? Shut up, Luz said, gritting his teeth. And listen... MB-32B is MIA. No, KIA. 
I've tried every radio channel and heard nothing. I need medical assistance and I need it as soon as possible. Got it. There's a pause from the other end. Copy that. In dispatch? No response. I quit.